CMD, or Command Prompt as it's actually known, is a text-based interface in Windows that allows you to interact with the operating system by entering commands. And its importance really lies in the ability to provide a powerful and fast way to manage and control various system functionality. And so once upon a time, this is how Windows was used. And back then it was known as DOS for disk operating system. And back then, text was king. Everything was text. And for the most part, system administration is just much faster and easier utilizing text-based interfaces as opposed to relying on whatever the functionality of a GUI might provide to you. So in this lab, we're going to jump in and get you familiarized with using CMD, running commands, and just feeling more comfortable with the command line itself before introducing you to some more advanced concepts after. Okay, cool. So if you haven't already opened it up while I've been talking, it's that little black box on the taskbar pinned. If you select it, it will open up a command prompt that I'm currently in. Let's run a command. We'll use the ver command, V-E-R. And what this will do will output us what the version of Windows currently is. So nice and easy, right? We just enter in a command, we get some output, and we're good to go. In this case, the output suggests that this is Windows version 10. And notice that when we run something like this on the command line, we get a lot more information than we would from typical buttons and display on the GUI. We can see that that dot zero and the dot two zero three four eight, these indicate more things like build numbers and major and minor version numbers of the Windows 10 series itself. Let's look at some more. We have the CD command, and that is actually to change directory. And if we don't specify where we want to go, it'll actually just bring us back to our home folder, which is users administrator. So what's inside of our home folder? Well, the dir command to list our directory contents will show us all the specific folders and files we have. Now let's generate an error. I'm going to write the command clear, and this doesn't actually have any purpose. And what we just saw here is an error statement. And this is very, very common to run into. Errors on the command line are easy to make and error statements are incredibly important to pay attention to because generally they're going to tell you exactly what the error was or they're going to provide you with an error code for you to look up inside of documentation. Thankfully for us in this case, it's just telling you that this is not a recognized command. So let's enter in a recognized command and that would be CLS instead of clear. And CLS clears the terminal to keep it nice and clean and as a nice efficient working space. I'll zoom in a little bit here now for the next set of commands. Let's learn how to make a folder. We can use the make directory or mkdir command, and then let's make a test folder. And then let's try cding or change directory to the folder. But notice how I typed it out. I don't really need to do that. Let's delete some of these characters and then hit tab. You see how it just appeared after hitting tab? If we hit tab on our keyboard, it will autocomplete what we're trying to type if the folder or file or the path exists. And that's a really handy shortcut. And it also makes sure that we're gonna be specifying the correct folders and files so that we're not making mistakes. So I definitely recommend to get into the habit of that. Cool, well, if we run a dir command, we can see nothing's here. And I'm going to run the clear command often for the next set of commands just to keep the terminal clean. So I'll clear it right now. And I want to do an echo hello into a file. And what we've done here is we've redirected the output of echoing hello into test file. And if we run a command like type, type can let us read the contents of a file. And if we try that against the file that we just put hello inside of, it should print hello to the terminal. Okay, so what if we don't know what a command does? Well, often we can just try running the command with a forward slash question mark, and it will give us a brief summary of what it does and some ways for us to run it. So let's do that with the rename command. If I type rename forward slash question mark, we'll get some information over here of what it does and how we can rename a file. And we can see we just need to specify the old versus the new, and now we can rename test file to hello.txt. If we run a type now against hello.txt, we'll see hello, because all we've done is change the file name, but the data within it has remained the same. Okay, but what if we wanted to add some text to the file? Well, we could also do hello, and we're gonna say darkness my old friend, and then we can append it with two of those little redirectors into the file. And if we do a type, you can see we now have two lines of file text. 
So this doesn't overwrite the file when we have two of those redirectors. Okay, cool. We can also run applications like Notepad from the command line. First, let's echo in some more text into two new files. So I'll do some echo, some more text inside of hello2.txt, and then echo final text inside of hello3.txt. And then I'll run Notepad on hello.txt, and it's going to open up Notepad with that file. There you go, that's pretty cool. Now if we run a dir command, you can see that we've populated the folder with some files. All right, so what if we wanted to terminate that notepad process? Well, we can run task list, which will essentially be like looking at task manager, but on the command line. And then if we wanted to find notepad, we could do this little pipe operator to pipe that output that we just saw inside of a find command, and it will find notepad within that output. And notice the PID, the process ID of notepad is 1168. Now we can terminate the notepad process by running a task kill command. And I'm going to run it with some flags or options. And I can do that with a slash, so slash F for force, slash PID for process ID, and then specify the PID. And you can see notepad was terminated promptly. All right, so let's do some file deletion on the command line now. We can run the del command and just specify the file and it will disappear. A dir command will show the file is now removed. Now, what if we wanted to delete multiple files? Well, computer is very logical, right? So if we were to specify something like del and then he, and then throw in an asterisk, which means a wildcard for any type of characters after that, the computer would interpret that and say, okay, I'm going to delete any file that begins with he, but then can have anything else after that, and I will delete it. Now let's run a dir command, and they're gone. So that's pretty handy. There's different ways to manipulate these commands, as you can see. Now let's delete that folder, and that would be an rmdir command, so remove directory. And off it's gone. Cool. We can also do more on the command line. We can look at system information with the system info command. And if we run this, we'll get a full output of everything about our system. Processor, hardware, memory, patches installed, even some basic IP address info. But if we wanted more IP address information, we could run the IP config command. And we'll get much more into that in the networking module. But just as a demonstration, we could obtain whatever we need on the command line, even networking information and system information with a quick command. Okay, and now to demonstrate the power of the command line a little bit, this is advanced, but just to show you, we could also do a reg query command. So this will actually query the registry, which we saw in the other lab. And in the other lab, we use the GUI, but on the command line, you could whip around pretty quickly just by specifying the keys that you want to interact with and then add in value types like strings and other binaries. So let's do a query on the same path that we looked inside of the registry lab of the current version run. And we can see that there's nothing here. But what if I wanted to add in the computer to start up with Notepad once I log in? Well, I'm going to just paste in the command that I have here in the side because it's pretty long, but you can see essentially how it works is we can run a reg for registry, add, and then specify the entire hive. And then we're going to put in the value name of example entry. And then we need to specify the type, which is that string that we interacted with before. And then the value that we put inside of it would be notepad.exe. That's pretty cool. And the slash F is just to suppress it and force that it goes. Now, if we hit the up arrow key twice, we can go back to the previous command and query, and we can see that notepad.exe was actually added inside of the run key. That's pretty cool. So you see how much faster it is, right? And now we can delete it by just changing the command slightly from add to delete, and it's been completed. One more look inside with the query, and it's gone. Cool, so that's a bit of an introduction to the command line. And look, it can be a little overwhelming at first to think, oh wow, like I have to remember all of these commands. And truthfully, that's never really going to be the case. The command line has an almost endless amount of commands and different ways to run them, and no one is really memorizing all of them. The way that we try to look at it is for objective and purpose. 
And sure, in your day to day job, if you're going to be doing things on the command line quite often, you're probably going to remember them easier. But often people just have cheat sheets of commands that they've kept aside that they find handy. And as long as they can think back to the general objective or purpose of what they want to do, like adding folders, removing them, deleting multiple files at once, you can refer back to them as you need. So until then, it's just more about exposure, getting the reps in, taking mental notes, saving things you find of interest. And honestly, you might start to really enjoy it after you see just how powerful it is versus the GUI.